So today we're carrying on reading about the reign of King Solomon. And just as the temple was dedicated yesterday, today it's as if like um, almost that night. Well, it is. It says at night, um, the Lord appeared to Solomon. And there's a couple of promises that he makes. That I just find amazing to read about the temple. He says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. And then slightly later, he says, my eyes and my heart will always be there. And then he qualifies that slightly later uh, when he says, um, look, but if you turn away from me, if you forsake me, then I will reject you and I will reject this place that I've put my name in. And ultimately, that's what happens in the story of Israel. They take this place where God has promised to be attentive to their prayers and they worship other gods. They take this place where God has promised to put his heart and his eyes there. And they, in that place, effectively prostitute themselves as a, as a people to worship all these other gods and to do all these practices that God found detestable. It's like someone having an affair and using the marriage bread, bed to do it. The most intimate of places becomes for them the place of their sin. And so God does ultimately reject Israel, as we're going to see as the story continues. But just, I, I think these, these promises of God can be applied to us. When we understand that we today are God's temple, that's what the New Testament teaches, that his presence is is on us. Just apply this to the fact that you are his temple, that the church is God's temple. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered by you and by me, his temple. My eyes and my heart will always be there. He always listens to your prayer. And then the next, uh, it goes on and on about Solomon and what a legend he is. Uh, the Queen of Sheba comes and she comes to ask him loads of hard questions. Don't you want to know what the hard questions were? It doesn't tell you. It's like, hmm, Solomon, tell me, what is the square root of 2,978,000? Oh, well, Queen of Sheba, it's, no, it doesn't tell you what the hard questions are. The sense is that they're probably questions, I think, to do with God and the way the world works and ethics rather than really difficult maths questions. But maybe it was maths. I don't know. Um, but she comes and she's obviously she's obviously blown away by Solomon's wisdom and not only by his wisdom, but by his excessive wealth. And this is this is the high point of Israel as a kingdom. To be perfectly honest, it's all going to be downhill from here. This is the this is when they are a superpower um, as close as they come anyway. And in this in this time, what is lauded and what is praised is Solomon, his wealth and his wisdom. Uh, people were told come from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon. Uh, people queue up how happy they must be, says the Queen of Sheba, to stand in his presence and listen to his wisdom. Oh, my word. This is Barack Obama times a million. And then in Matthew chapter 12, verse 42, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. On the day of judgment, the Queen of the South, the Queen of Sheba, will stand up and condemn you who are here because she came to listen to Solomon and one who is greater than Solomon stands before you. For all his wealth and for all his wisdom, Solomon is like a...